Hello. Today I'm playing another 2v2 today on Napoleon Total War, together with the Iron Price again. This is the deployment phase, and we are playing on the Pyramids map, uh, which I think is a, one of the is, is a fantastic map. And uh, basically, the the central strategy here uh, can revolve around capturing this town, which is a strong point. And so our opponents here. We're, we are both playing as Prussia, but our opponents are going to want to capture this hill or deploy quickly up here, and that will give them a good opportunity to attack, uh, bombard our forces, uh, potentially from that position. So I'm playing on the right, pretty sure. I see no one cares about deployment. Let's speed this up. Uh, the, let's take a look. So... This is probably this is this is probably me. Uh, this game's from a while ago. I'm just trying to remember. Yeah, this is this is the build I typically bring because I I don't bring any of the Jaegers. Uh, I prefer just the, the Fusiliers. You get more numbers with them as a light infantry. Um, I, I like to support my light infantry in this game with the Prussian militia unit, the Landwehr. Landwehr, I think it's Landwehr. Uh, let's see, I, my main infantry line is musketeer units mixed with elite infantry. So I have foot guards, fantastic unit. Let's take a look at them. More musketeers. So I think the real advantage, 8th Life Regiment, the real advantage of the uh, Russians are their light Infantry are probably the best in the game, and if you can, if you can decisively win the light infantry battle in Napoleon Total War <clears throat> or an Empire, it gives you a huge advantage. It's kind of like winish, winning the skirmishing fight in Medieval Total War or some of the other games. So I can already fire. So I brought these experimental howitzers. This is a pretty heavy investment. Uh, and I'm using that to attack France, French Empire here, up on the hill. So, again, this is a, a very strong point uh, for this French player. So, yeah, it looks like we have two French players to attack. Um, the, the howitzer units are really not good versus other artillery. Here I have 12 pounder foot artillery. I'm trying to use this. So this is a really good way to attack the enemy troops. So that was a good hit on that cavalry unit. I guess it only took out six. But if, if you can fire across the length of the unit, uh, that really increases your chances of, of taking out a lot of the enemy forces. So this player is moving in very aggressively. That's probably smart because you know they're they're taking a lot of hits from this experimental howitzer. Uh, unfortunately, this unit is going to be vulnerable to the the enemy artillery. Let's go ahead and take a look at the forces of my ally here, the Iron Price. So musketeers, musketeers. So it looks like his whole mainline infantry is all just uh, sort of the, the standard Prussian infantry and musketeers. And he's brought the Jaegers, uh, which are the Prussian riflemen. And they have a much... They have a much longer lane... <coughs> much longer range than the Fusilier unit. Um, the Prussian Fusiliers, which is kind of confusing because I think the French Fusiliers... Uh, are part of their mainline infantry. Or that might be true for the other uh, Might be true for some of the other nations in the game. So, he's, he's got the riflemen as his light infantry. And so he does have elite infantry further in the back. So, Prussia doesn't have uh, necessarily the best cavalry game. So 
I always bring the Lancer units or the Blondes that are very, very effective on the charge that will not, will not necessarily do well in the long combat. This is bad, so this light infantry unit is probably going to need it to come over. We took out a lot of their yeah, Grenadiers off the So this is... I've taken out most of this unit already. This is the best cavalry unit in the game. Very and very expensive. This All men are running, sir. Might be destroyed. But to take out such an elite cavalry unit, such a heavy investment for the enemy player, that'll be very good for me early on. Uh, here, it seems like this other player isn't press pressing, uh, pressing as much forward, but he has... A very... This is a six-inch house. I thought he might have had the, uh, the Grand Battery of the Coalition, which is probably the most powerful powerful artillery unit in the game. And, you know, if, if you bring that to the France, you don't need to move. You can, if you can force the enemy to come out. Secondly, the artillery just can't tear them apart as bad. So the Iron Price has brought Hussars, which are a good light cavalry unit, I think. Free Corps. This might be like a range. Is this a ranged cavalry? I'm not certain. Alright, let's take a look at the French forces. Yeah, so this is these people approach here. So even though this player's managed to take the hill, uh, we've managed to achieve artillery superiority over the, the French players. Which is kind of, you know, France has things like the Grand Battery of the Coalition that can really be, uh, you know, I, I think the French players typically have better artillery. I don't know, it might be a little bit closer. If, if, you're, if, if you're, the French are going to bring the Grand Battery of the Coalition, that's a substantial investment, so they, the rest of their forces might be weaker. That might... Basically, I, what I don't understand is the, the French players really should have taken advantage of having this hill with the artillery. Um, they could have really pressed themselves a lot more strongly. Really, if you have this hill in the game, you might be stronger. You're probably going to be stronger with the artillery. Attack. But instead, we have this sort of haphazard approach here, and it's, it's clear that they feel like they've lost the artillery engagement, and they need, they need to be So in Empire and Napoleon Total War, you know, typically whoever loses the artillery duel is going to be the player that, you know, that moves from the attack. So it's fair, if you win the artillery duel, you know, that's very important part of the game, especially like if you have forward deployed cannon units that can deploy, or that can use canister shot, that can be very decisive in the final infantry engagement. So you want to win that, and like I said earlier, you know, I was talking about winning the light infantry engagement is very important. Well, you know, in some ways, winning the artillery duel is even more important. 
so this is... You know what I think might have happened here? This player might have left? I don't think so. Uh, but this is a mistake here. So, we have three of these cannon units in very dense infantry formation. Our opponent's trying to, to attack, attack our artillery here. And, you know, they might take it. Looks like they're going to. Uh, but they're just going to suffer. The loss of Swiss foot, that's that's like elite French infantry. Uh, if you lose these units, it's going to be very bad for you. So then here we go, forming in a square formation right uh, within canister shot range. That would be disaster. So it looks like we're holding them back here. This is a this is a more use of elite French infantry. I'm moving my main line. Uh, but here we go. So this is this is a very strong position. Or this is a very strong attack formation. So maybe what he was trying to do is kind of distract us here with this while this player approaches. Um, so these chasseurs, if they get within range of firing on these Jaegers, they're going to larger units with much denser fire. That's why I prefer not bringing the right units in my light infantry, because I prefer those denser units. So, if this attack proceeds uh, like it's going, they're going to they're gonna definitely destroy Iron's light infantry here. So this whole attack Our men are running for disastrous. Uh, we definitely lost some cavalry units, but I mean, we took out and that's Swiss, Swiss foot, and that's not going to be So here we go. So this is another very bad engagement for our opponents because here, here we have double lines of uh, infantry fire on our side. That's going to be really devastating to so this is good, he's got an angle on us here, that's gonna be bad for this musketeer unit, but for all, all along the rest of this line, we have our light infantry doubled up with our main line infantry. So you know, we're firing from the standing position. The threat is just gonna take a lot more hits than we are. We're gonna use our militia unit to uh, men are running for if they can get a charge. Line to, to get 
get into the square formation here. Just by putting in and out of square formation, that, that's really going to help this engagement. Um, so the, this... Our men are running for... This whole engagement is going much more slowly. It seems that neither of the players here really feel the need to... Well, here we go, the French players moving. National Guard, that's a militia unit up against Russian elite infantry. They're going to get slaughtered. I think uh, the, the Prussian musketeers, which are just like the regular uh, line infantry for the Russians, are, I think they're, they're definitely better than the French mainline infantry as well. So you can see these players invested a lot. Maybe that's why they didn't bring the kind of elite artillery units. They invested heavily in their infantry. A ton of elite French units. You got the Polish Legion. Yeah, we saw that this foot field guard. Those are very competitive mainline infantry units, but they didn't have the support they needed. aspects of this game wrapped up. One thing that's great about Napoleon Total and Empire is that the, the infantry engagements, the combat really lasts a long time compared to later games. I mean, these units will just... It feels, All men are running for it. It kind of feels more realistic. I, I think people accuse some of the later Total War games of having kind of an arcadey, kind of a gamey feel to them. I mean, they are video games. I mean, none of this is like what was real uh, combat like in the 1700s, 1800s. I mean, it, it, it didn't look like this. It's, it's, this is a video game. I mean, maybe, you know, it, it, it's it's not a simulator, okay? I mean, they're video games first, but when you have these prolonged engagements, it, it, it gives it kind of a heavy, realistic feel. And that's something that I appreciate the play. So like I said, this here, here's the problem with this engagement by Russian ally here, is that this is a very dense formation. They're getting double lines of fire, and again, want to be spread out in this game, but during this engagement, there are a ton of... The men of fatigue, sir, I must rest away. There's a ton of Prussian infantry units that are really firing at this dense French formation. If he were to move his forces out, he could flank them. Well, it doesn't matter now, because I decisively pretty much beat this French player. I'm just going to ignore his general, and I'm gonna, we're going to double-team the French here. Uh, so I think the low morale on my Prussian ally here has a lot to do with this general. Getting taken out by uh, French cavalry just a moment ago. The other thing in terms of quote unquote realism is in all the Total War games, you know, the unit size is much, much smaller than anything that actually went down in these time periods. Some of these armies are you know, many tens of thousands of troops. You had tens of thousands of troops, you just can't achieve those numbers uh, in any total game. I think I think you can edit the unit size. I think there's videos of people who have done that to, to get gigantic, huge infantry uh, numbers, huge cavalry numbers, whatever.
frankly, this is this game's done. Just need to wrap it up here. We have killed their general, sir. Now they must break. So we, we basically we got a double. Glorious victory, sir, is soon to be yours. We had a double development there. French player. There's a, there's a few units left. Uh, so we still have artillery. We to have a few cavalry units left. So that was probably during that engagement. I was still taking artillery fire, but it was worth it to, to trap the rest of the, the French Yeah, I really, uh, some of these Empire Napoleon maps are, are really, uh, I think some of the best maps in total war. I think they require a lot of, uh, a lot of kind of tactical thinking. I mean, the a lot men of, of fatigue, many of the must games rest have, a while. they all have good maps, but some of these are my favorite. Pyramids is definitely one of my favorite maps in any Total War game. So is Waterloo. Um, that's a good map. I'll, I'll probably show some Waterloo map battles later. So there we go. I think at that point the uh, opponents left the game and admitted defeat. So that, that was a good game. Uh, for us, anyways. I actually might have thought it was a different we, we, we played a different battle on the Pyramids map with a French player who brought the, the Grand Battery of the Coalition, which is kind of the elite French artillery unit. It's, uh, and we were playing on this side of the map, and, and they had the... Uh, with that unit, we were taking heavy artillery fire throughout the game. It was a much more competitive game, I think, than what happened here. Uh, it's organized by kills. So yeah, line infantry the bulk of the work here. Uh, though, of course, I mean, that's a that's a huge number of kills, especially for light infantry. Foot guards. A lot, a lot of cavalry engagements in this game are very quick and are uh, over with soon. So there we go. Uh, hope you enjoyed it.